as today's workforce continues to evolve, I think understanding these older workers' wants and needs can, can benefit workers and employers alike. So as the older workers and the number of older workers continues to grow substantially over the next decade, I think it offers a huge opportunity to build more age diverse and inclusive workplaces. Midlife is the best season of our lives, but often many of us lack fulfillment in some area of our midlife. It doesn't have to be that way. This podcast is a resource for midlifers to discover ways to find fulfillment in whatever area of life you need it. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Join me on the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, a journey to make midlife the most fulfilling season of your life. Hello, my midlife friend. Welcome to episode 68. This is Bernie Borges, your host of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Hey, if you're new to the pod, welcome. This is is a Midlife Maximum episode featuring Carly Reskowski, Vice President of Financial Resilience at AARP. If you're not familiar with AARP, and I mean today's AARP, you're going to get an update today. For example, did you know that there's no minimum age to join AARP? I didn't know that. Anyway, we didn't discuss that. But on this episode, Carly and I discuss key findings from AARP's report that's titled The Value of Experience, an Examination of Workers Ages 40 Plus. This report is updated by AARP every five years. The survey for this report was taken by 2,000 respondents age 40 plus in the U.S. labor force. Now, we discussed the most recent update of this report that published in January 2023. But first, before I get to my interview with Carly, do you work for a brand that wants to reach my Midlife Fulfill podcast audience immersively? By immersively, I mean through storytelling, by featuring people that have a compelling story in their life that's influenced by your brand. And because their story is influenced by their relationship with your brand, it connects to your brand organically and your brand naturally has value with my audience because it's relevant. Hey, if brand collaboration through immersive storytelling interests you, get in touch with me to explore collaborating with me on the Midlife Fulfill podcast. And now here's my conversation with Carly Ryskowski. Vice President of Financial Resilience at AARP. Carly, welcome to the Midlife Fulfill Podcast, a Midlife Maximum episode. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. We're going to have a great conversation. There is so much for un- for us to unpack, but let's begin with just a, a quick introduction. Tell us about you, your role at AARP, but let's really begin with an introduction, or as I like to say, maybe a reintroduction for my listener to AARP. Sure. So AARP has been around for over 60 years. It is the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that's dedicated to empowering people to choose how they live as they age. We have a nationwide presence and nearly 38 million members. AARP strengthens communities and advocates for what matters most to families, health security, financial stability, and personal fulfillment. That's excellent. You know, as I like to say, Carly, the AARP of today is not my father's AARP. Wow, the organization has really, really evolved quite a bit in the 60 plus years that it's been around. Tell us a little bit about your role, Vice President Financial Resilience. Tell us about your role. Yeah, so Bernie, in my role, I sit within the large ARP nonprofit part of the organization. I do financial resilience programming, which is focused on consumer education 
in issues such as work and jobs, social security, savings and planning, and we create programs to educate the consumers on issues that fall within those buckets to look at sort of your entire financial resilience portfolio. And I've been with the organization for about five years now. Fantastic. Well, that is a key area that we all care about. So thank you for doing what you do, Carly. That sounds like a great job. Carly, let's get to it. Uh, I was really, really enamored by this report, The Value of Experience, subtitled An Examination of Workers Ages 40 Plus. This is a report that was published by AARP in January of this year, 2023. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, it's published every five years. So why don't you begin by giving us just a, a brief overview of the report, and then we're going to discuss some key findings from this report. Sure. Thanks, Bernie. The value of experience survey, as you mentioned, is done every five years and it's done with um, our multicultural group and jobs group here at AARP. The sample included 2000 respondents ages 40 plus in the labor force. So those working full time, part time and those who might not be working, but are looking for work. Fantastic. Well, the report just has so much information. And of course, we're going to link up the report in the show notes. So I know my listener, if you're thinking about accessing the report, don't worry, we've got you covered. But let's let's get to some key findings from the report. There's just so much in there. One of them is that nearly all older workers, again, 40 plus, seek and choose employment that has meaning. So why don't you elaborate on that finding, Carly? Sure. So we've seen coming out of COVID and the pandemic that older workers more than ever are rethinking their priorities and they truly want work that is meaningful, uh, not just a means to a paycheck, but work-life balance, flexibility, but also doing work that is either giving back or has a deeper meaning. And, you know, I, ha I have to comment on the fact that they're referred to as older workers. I know in, in my workplace, I work with many people that are, quote unquote, younger than me. So technically speaking, I guess that I'm, I'm an older worker. But in this context, we're talking about the survey of workers that are over the age of 40. Right. So that's the, the context that um, that we're referring to when the report is referring to older workers. So. And absolutely choosing work that has meaning. I mean, I can relate to that, right? When we're in our 40 plus years, we want to be doing something that we care about, something that actually means something to us. So I certainly uh, can relate to that. The, the next finding that I wanted to ask you to comment on, Carly, is work-life balance. It, it's key for the older workers, especially those who are caregivers of either adults or children. So why don't you elaborate on that one a little bit? Sure. So we have over 40 million caregivers in this country. And the review or the statistics around work-life balance isn't surprising, given that uh, a high percentage of older workers are caregivers of a parent or friend or loved one. Um, many of them acknowledged having to work remotely or change work hours or reduce hours. They've had to take sick leave or temporary leave or use paid caregiving leave. Um, so this isn't surprising uh, given those statistics. But I think also coming out of the pandemic, capitalizing on the slower pace and spending more time at home has led workers to reevaluate their personal goals and plans with their career plans, as well as how they prioritize um, how work fits into their lives. Yeah. And the whole caregiver role is so common as we get into that 40 plus season of life. I can remember in, in my forties, uh, my kids were still in the house and my parents were aging. So it's kind of like that sandwich generation. And then over time, eventually my parents, uh, reached what I'd call an elder state in, in terms of age 
and even health decline. So being a caregiver is something that we just experience very commonly. And so to me, the work-life balance is something that I can relate to. And it's no surprise that it's a very important element that was one of the key findings in the report. The next key finding is older workers cite workplace flexibility as a key requirement for accepting a new job. So we'll unpack that one for us. Sure. So I think, again, a lot of this coming out of the pandemic with a hybrid work environment or working from home being more acceptable with employers and different careers, 44% stated that they are working remotely. And some of the stats we have around flexibility include that more than a quarter of older workers are actually doing freelance or gig work due to the flexibility to decide when they work, how much they work, uh, the autonomy of being one's own boss. And so we've seen an increase in that, that gig and freelance or contract work economy for older workers really stemming from that that need or desire for flexibility. Now, was the, the older worker, the 40 plus worker in the gig economy, a factor in the previous report back in 2018, five years ago? It was, but we did see that from 2018's report to the report that we just released in January of 2023, that the number of older workers did increase from I believe it was 18% in 2018 to 27% in this current report. All right. Now, another key finding, and unfortunately, this one doesn't surprise me. I, I, I wish it wasn't here, but uh, this one is about older workers believing that AIDS discrimination persists in the workplace and that the vast majority support strengthening AIDS discrimination laws. Yes, unfortunately, uh, this report showed that over three in five, so 64% believe that older workers do face age discrimination in today's workplace. And among them, 94% viewed it as commonplace. So it's not a new thing and it, it isn't going away. Um, during the pandemic, we we did see it increase as high as 78%. So we're glad that it, it's coming down, but it's still common in today's workplace. And, and unfortunately, something that older workers are continuing to, to see. Now, the good thing is, correct me if I'm wrong, AARP as an organization, you're a nonprofit, and you even stated in the introduction, nonpartisan. So one of the things that you do as an organization is to advocate for the people who are in this age range who are members of AARP, right? Yes, correct. We do have um, a huge advocacy arm here at AARP that advocates both on the federal and the state level. And age discrimination is a large area of work that we advocate against. We have seen some big wins at the state level across the country, things like removing age or graduation year from resumes or employers not being allowed to ask for graduation dates. We also have resources and support for the consumers on AARP.org, where you can share your story or find support and resources if you feel that you're experiencing age discrimination. So both on the side of advocating for the consumer, but also having support and resources is something that AARP does provide. That's great. Thank you for uh, for summarizing that. Carly, the, the, the next finding is one that uh, really makes me proud. It makes me feel good. And, and that is that older workers, and again, just to restate here, it, older workers means 40 plus in this report, are resilient and want to grow professionally and I say amen to that. So why don't you elaborate on that? Yes, they are. Older workers are resilient and they have a growth mindset. We we want to continue to learn new skills and uh, grow professionally in our careers. We find satisfaction when we are learning something new or we're continuing to grow in our jobs. And we are open to upskilling and reskilling and actually you know, want those opportunities. 
Yeah, I mean, again, speaking from my own personal experience, I know I have I have felt that way really my entire career and haven't slowed down any in my desire to upskill and my desire to grow professionally. So while I may be a data point of one, the point I'm getting at is that I totally agree. And I'm, and I'm glad to see it validated. I'm glad to see that I'm not an anomaly, you know, that it's actually bears out in the data in this report. So, uh, so I feel like I'm in good company and can also feel something that I refer to all the time and that's age pride. You know, like I don't hide my age. I've spoken about it many times here on the podcast. I'm in my mid sixties. And so for people to have taken the, the, the survey for this report and then validated things like, I want to continue to grow professionally. It just warms my heart. I love it. Carly, I'm going to ask you also about this next one that, you know, likewise, it warms my heart because I can certainly relate to it. And that is wanting to feel valued, respected, included, and accepted. Yes. So like any, I think, human, it's intrinsic within us to want to identify with what we do. I think that's a, another big reason why we saw so many older workers wanting to do work that's meaningful. They feel that their job's an important part of their identity. They agree that respect and inclusion and acceptance in a company culture is important to, to what they want out of their career. We spend so much time at work. We, we want to feel included and we want to be in a place that values different perspectives and opinions. Those are key attributes for as older workers are looking at different organizations that they're looking for in their job search to, to join an organization is sort of the, the diversity and the multi-generational or age inclusive environment that employers can provide. And it's so common in many workplaces for teams of people to be extremely diverse in age range. So if you're someone like me that's in that 40 plus age range and I'm working in a group of people that are my age all the way down to 30 years younger than me, which is not uncommon, it's all the more important that we want to feel respected and valued and accepted. So Again, another big amen to that one. <laughs> yes, we currently have five generations in the workforce, which, as you mentioned, creates a very a varied and a huge range of diverse opinions and ages that should all feel supported and included in, 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 in a workplace. Exactly, exactly. All right. Carly, so we, you know we've covered some key findings in this report, and where I'd like to go next is give us some insight into what AARP does with these findings, with this report. Every five years, you publish it, and what do you do with it? It's a great question. We have a ton of different groups that take this value of experience research and actually go out and use it. So for me, I've been speaking to other media outlets and other industries and organizations about our findings. We talk a lot to employers. We have an employer pledge program where employers can pledge and sign on to be age inclusive and be open to the multi-generational workforce and an age inclusive culture where we provide employers tools and resources in order to do that. We talk a lot to HR and DEI professionals, diversity, equity, and inclusion professionals. Age is often overlooked as an element of DEI. However, studies and research show that multi-generational workforce positively impacts the bottom line of an organization. So we do go out and talk to a, a lot of employers and partners about committing to aging inclusion and an age inclusive culture and including age in their DEI efforts. We also talk a lot about following age-inclusive recruitment practices, going back to those staggering statistics of age discrimination that came out of this research. 
We also talk to HR and benefit professionals around what types of benefits can help hire and retain older workers, the need for flexibility and accessibility, the support for working family caregivers, and the desire for older workers to want to continue to learn new skills and upskilling uh, the older workforce. And I would imagine that those conversations with organizations are across a variety of different industries and even size companies, right? Because, you know, in the news every day, we hear about big companies, but really, and I don't know what the numbers are, but I think there's way more smaller companies than there are big companies in the U.S. Yes, we have about 20% of our current employer pledge program signers are large, considered large companies, and 80% are in that small to mid-size company range. So we also work with our colleagues across AARP and AARP Foundation, who has an entire litigation team that does work in the age discrimination and fighting f- against that, as well as other employers that work with AARP, where we're continuing to talk about the importance of of age inclusion. So if someone does experience what they consider to be age discrimination, then are they in a position, is anyone in a position to reach out to AARP as an organization and seek assistance? Yes. As I mentioned earlier in the show, we do have a share your story, consumer facing platform where consumers can talk about their experience We also have, um, as part of our AARP Foundation litigation team who fights on age discrimination issues, as well as partnerships with organizations like the EEOC and others that are fighting age discrimination out in the world. Gotcha. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Well, Carly, before I ask you for a closing thought uh, on this report, the value of experience and examination of workers ages 40 plus, why don't you tell our listener where they can actually find it themselves online? You can go to aarp.org forward slash value of experience. So value of experience just right after aarp.org. And of course, my listener knows, Carly, that that will be linked up in the show notes page that's directly below or to the side, depending on what podcast listener you are listening on. So give us a closing thought, Carly. What should we be thinking about among all these key takeaways from this report? I just want to stress that the older worker has a ton of value to bring to the organization. Everything from leadership and mentoring and some of those soft skills, the experience that an older worker can bring to an organization can have positive impacts on creativity, innovation, and the bottom line. And as we saw from the report, and I think most of us experiencing coming out of the pandemic, where we want work that is meaningful, we want flexibility, less stress, a work-life balance, but also we want to love what we do and find important and meaningful work and I think the fact that an older worker, as we as we age and we live longer, you know, aging isn't about getting old, it's about living. And just remembering that older workers have experience experiences and learnings that can benefit all parts of an organization. I agree. Well said. And and if I can just add a sort of a personal anecdote to that, Carly. My approach to working with people in the workplace who are decades younger than me is to try really hard to never come across like I know better I'm be- or I am smarter or any of that, right? Just the opposite. I want to be humble. I want to be a team member, even if I'm in a position of leadership. But I also want to share my experience in a way that's going to be helpful and, and recognized as helpful so that those individuals on their own, come to understand the value of that experience. And then back to what we were discussing earlier, then the acceptance and the respect is there. It just happens naturally through that relationship building. So it's wonderful to see that we have 
AARP as an organization that's out there advocating for this huge swath of, of age demographics in the U.S. and that you're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, again, advocating and supporting us. And I love this report. Carly, I just want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to share key findings from this report. And anything else you want to say before we wrap up here? Bernie, I just wanted to thank you for having me today. It was a pleasure to talk about this really important work and the report findings. And as today's workforce continues to evolve, I think understanding these older workers' wants and needs can, can benefit workers and employers alike. So as the older workers and the number of older workers continues to grow substantially over the next decade, I think it offers a huge opportunity to build more age diverse and inclusive workplaces. Couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, Carly, for joining me for a Midlife Maximum episode on this episode of Midlife Fulfilled. The findings in this report validate many things that we already know to be true. Be sure to catch my solo takeaway episode on episode 69 for a dedicated episode where I break down for you my takeaways and one, maybe two challenges for you to consider in your work life. I want to thank Carly Ruskowski, Vice President of Financial Resilience at AARP for joining me on this episode and for sharing the findings from the latest update to this report, The Value of Experience an examination of workers ages 40 plus. The report is linked up in the show notes page for this episode. Just scroll down or scroll right, depending on your pod player. Hey, while you're on the show notes page, consider this. I am looking to partner with a few select brands whose products or services help people in a midlife season improve an area of their life. Now, I want to do this through immersive storytelling. By immersive storytelling, I mean featuring people that have a compelling story in midlife that's influenced by the impact of your brand in their life. It could be career-related, health-related, relationship-related, financial-related. I think you get the idea. It depends on your brand. The point is, I'll feature their story provided that it offers either inspiration or education, or even entertainment. And because their story is influenced by their relationship with your brand, it connects to your brand organically. And your brand naturally has value with my audience because it's relevant. Hey, if brand collaboration through immersive storytelling interests you, get in touch with me to explore collaborating with me on the Midlife Fulfill podcast. My next guest episode features Brandon Rodriguez. Brandon lives in the Hollywood area, as in Hollywood, California. He's in the entertainment business, but we didn't discuss his job. We discussed his BF to AF story about his journey to authenticity living in Hollywood. Either you or someone you know will relate to Brandon's story. Be sure that you're subscribed to the Midlife Fulfill podcast to make sure that each episode shows up on your pod player auto-magically. If you're still with me, my midlife friend, thanks for hanging with me to the end of this episode. We made it. I'll remind you, as I always do, that if you're 80% fulfilled, you're doing great. I'll see you on the next episode.